All right, folks, here in South Dakota, Arizona, here we are for a Friday Scrapyard Run adventure. Like I said, days, days are getting a little turned around for a little while, but hey, Friday Scrapyard Run, definitely got some good buckets there of steel. Let's check out the wall of steel we got going on here today. Definitely got a good little wall. All right, got the grills, got the chairs, got all the good stuff here, even got the kitchen sink. All right, and the Arizona Specials, all that good stuff. Well, man, we'll be running down steel today, so let's go check it out. Alright folks, that was a sweaty one. As we go all the way up to the sky there, a lot of good heavy stuff today. Got an aluminum rim, wondering what that's gonna pay. A lot of steel, a lot of steel, like I said. <laughs> so it's hot folks, <laughs> stacking this stuff up. But hey, let's go down there and we will see what it pays. Alright folks, as we pull into the scrap yard, there's a scale right there. Let's see where we're at here. Let's see here, we got 8180, 8180, not bad, not bad. And that's how you get rid of the car. Just put it right there in the old dumpster. Boom. Here in Southern Arizona, here we go for the way out. Let's see what we got today here. We got, uh, let's see here, 7,200. All right, folks, here in Southern Arizona, as we stare at the empty truck once again, went to the place and got, uh, let's see, do the tail of the tape. Got five cents a pound for at, I think we had 980 pounds, not bad. And then for the uh, aluminum wheels, got 750 and just a buck 60 for the little stainless sink. $58 total. So, hey, not bad. Good wrap up run. Already been put in the tank. Let's head back out. All right, folks, here in Southern Arizona, here we are on the freeway heading to our pretty neighborhood. That area has opened up the lovely tree lined streets. Gonna be heading out there, checking some other places. Let's go. Okay. There's a big old Arizona special on it. Huh. A rolling stand. Huh. Interesting. On casters. Just for clothing, I'm assuming. Or, uh, interesting. And this, I think, has got to be one of the biggest Arizona specials I've had. Hey, that's how we're doing this one, huh? Okay. Man. Whew. Oh, yeah. At least break down on me there for me, would you? All right, thank you. Nice little place there for that. Cool. <laughs> this is now the second one of these I have now. Okay. Well, maybe I could resell these as a poles rack thingies. Someone might want to buy, I don't know. Interesting. And did I see what I think I saw? I sure did. Wow. Oh my lord, that's... Damn. That's a TV. Whew. They ain't playing around with this TV, are they? There we go, perfect. This one just right. All right. Comes this fun part. This is a heavy bugger. I'll tell you what. <laughs> These Arizona specials. 
going on here. Oh, it's a triple decker here. Is that what this is? Let's see here. Oh yeah. That looks like we got us a triple decker. Yeah, with this one, I think we can just break down, go ahead and give it to me right here. The aluminum junk onward. Oh, a parts washer? This is a parts cleaner? It looks like it. I wonder if it works. I thought this was like a kid's uh, desk or something. Triple Decker AZ Special here. Sounds like a burger. I'll have the Triple Decker AZ Special, please. Got hide right here, kind of in between. I can stack stuff around it. Okay, volume alone, that one's worth looking at, I think. I got light to begin with. No, it's part of the aluminum. Do we got us an above ground pool here? I think we do. Oh yeah, we'll be clanging and banging here for a bit. Hopefully not too much. Nope. Well hey, they haven't made a bottle of all plastic yet. All right. Still gonna need to be disconnected. Oh, the pool pump. We'll just clip that. And as I said before, I'm against those things. Those things have hit me in the head too many times. So we will leave that for another guy. In the meantime, we're going to clip this. That's good thick wire. And I tell you folks, it is a hot one today. I am definitely maybe tempering how long I'm out because it's it's been a bad, bad few weeks. Uh, today is gonna be a hot one, so we shall see. one above ground pool all right cute I'll say if i was a furniture guy i'd be loving this it's pretty cool you know what my daughter's like actual photos and she would probably love this that's pretty cool like i said if i was a furniture guy i'm sure they'll be coming along for that i'll save that that's cool oh will it that would be great. Oh, there's more. Normally I wouldn't do that, folks, but I don't want that thing hanging out in the wind, you know what I'm saying? So this is going to be going up high, and that is a definite wind catcher. Yeah, normally I wouldn't do that, but Pick up our mass. And do we have TV number two? It's kind of an older heavy one. All right. Man. I am still in the pretty neighborhood, folks. <laughs> I have not, I've barely gone through a few streets. I mean, a few, but man, not all that many. I'm get, getting good amounts. I like that. <laughs> That one going to get cut. <laughs> I'll use a rope when you got one. <sighs> oh, 
All right, folks here in Southern Arizona, let's do an oil change on the Scrap Beast Mobile right there. The big 6.0 turbo diesel Ford 2003. Now, what's, since they have bulletproofed it, this was where the oil filter went that is now empty that has been abandoned. And the new filter is down here in the front fender well. Let me see if I can get you up underneath there. Yeah, there it is. That little that little white thingy right there and then comes out there drips down and you just drip down the regular uh, oil pan there and since this thing is such a beast and since it's been bulletproof it actually takes more oil than normal so most cars you know you're you got a little just a couple of these things will be just fine but on this thing we got this baby right here yep and i'm probably going to use it that's five gallon bucket of rotella t4 for the big diesel there so let's put on high speed and hopefully you gearheads like watching this one, let me know. And that's where it all winds up folks right in there and we got our big old enormous new filter biggest one i've ever had for any of my trucks anyways and here we go we are set we got it all buttoned up here everything put back down together you know always leave a little bit of mess when you're trying something new yeah whatever also it was windy so i was deciding to blow all the oil as it was dripping down lovely but hey let's go in check the gauges here let's let that thing spin up and now we're watching that oil gauge. Boom, there we go. Pop up nice and good, baby. There you go. All right, now I'm going to talk a little louder here because we're going to check for leaks. Okay, I'm not seeing anything coming down there. Nor anything down there that wasn't there already hope you guys enjoyed that one as we get our oil level up nice and good there 246,493 miles on this bulletproof engine we're gonna keep this thing going let's do some scrapping yeah it's just a plastic dishwasher here this will just be a cord grab all right and there is that all right I had to spy that one for a second, but there was a light fixture mixed in amongst all that. Okay. Trading out for the new LEDs. Alright, so I'm gonna one chair deal here and maybe a couple things down the street here. Okay, that's an aluminum one. Check this out, I'm gonna have to put you right up on the engine here. I apologize for that, but those of you who like the diesel there you go I know someone who likes the diesel it's a scrap and junk and you know who you should watch folks mr. scrap and junk out of New Brunswick Canada he is the man want to see how to take stuff apart that guy is a guru at taking stuff apart I used to work in the scrap yards back in the day or in a scrap yard he told me so I'm sure he knows his stuff. Obviously, if you watch his channel, you'll see that. So like I said, folks, scrap and junk. Give him a look. I'll give you an example of how narrow these streets are, folks. I'm having to pull over to let this Amazon driver go by. Oh, he's, he's now parked in front of one of my piles. So I'm gonna have to wait until he's done so I can just merely get by him. Cause that's, as you can see, I'm, I'm not gonna risk scraping up these, these nice cars. No way. I waited that long, I'm getting something. A little smusher little smash burger thingy and right, what's this here a little extruded aluminum okay oh got someone waiting for us so we're gonna go all right here we go skateboard trucks skating on down the road with some skate trucks all right said before again i like this neighborhood it's cool see cool stuff like that i like that Okay, I just got one little 
Arizona special there, not, not bad of a deal. The AZ special trying to camouflage himself. Trying to escape the scrap man. You cannot escape the scrap man, no. Oh no, you cannot. It's seen its days and it won't even, yeah. Okay, that, put that on top of it. All right, folks, PD story time. Yes, PD story time once again. I apologize, last week's was completely ruined by the wind. We don't get much wind here in Arizona and the one time I try it, it kicked up like crazy and I did the whole thing and ruined it. But here we go again. Today's topic will be about police cars and the cars I drove while I did at my 24 years as a cop between 1997 and 2021. Now, when I first started as a volunteer in 94, we still had cars from 82 up on the board. I kid you not, we had 1982 Chevys still and I drove them because we were supposed to drive the oldest ones. I had one break down on me once. <laughs> I was out to try and help people who were broken down and my car broke down. Great. Anyways, yeah, it was uh, those old 90s Chevy, whoa, 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 blah, Chevy Caprice, what we called the box cars. 350 ends in them, those things had the bench seat, turned on a dime, fast as hell, just fast, really responsive. And it had what were called, the, what I call the growler lights. They were, you know, nowadays they got the LEDs, those things that'll make you have a seizure and go crazy. But back then it was, it was a single light and a mirror revolved around it. And it would make a growling sound that you could hear it above your head. It was pretty, it was weird. You which is kind of cool because nowadays you don't know when your lights are on. If you accidentally leave them on, people are pulling over. You're like, what the heck's going on? What are, what are they doing? Uh, so yeah, I, I really like that one. But those got phased out uh, to the 90s model of Chevy Caprices, the bubble cars. Those things were great. I love those cars. Roomy, big. Some of them have the LT1 Corvette engines in them. Oh man, you step on those things, you're, you're going. I'm telling you, those, those, those weren't a joke. They were fast, roomy, and good. I love those. 90s model Chevy Caprice is real good. Then came along the mighty Ford Crown Victoria. That was one of the best. I would say if there was ever a car built for police work, that was it, um, definitely. Um, unfortunately though, I only got to drive those for a few years because they had the problem with them blowing up. Even though Ford mitigated the problem with the fire suppression devices later on, we actually had a, a highway patrol officer was rear-ended on the freeway in my city and his car blew up. Now granted, the car that rear-ended him was driving over 100 miles an hour and rear-ended him and burst, car burst into flames and unfortunately he died. Um, so after that, those Crown Victorias started going. Um, it's funny though, uh, many departments don't keep them. Uh, in fact, the city I live in still drives them and they stopped making them in 2011. It is now 2023, so they're still driving those old ones. I love seeing those around there. And I got in my own pursuit in a Crown Victoria, so hey, can't can't say anything bad about that. Then we went on to, oh God, after that we got the crappy early 2000s model Chevy Caprices. Horrible car, you never see them on the road these days, know why? Because they sucked and they're all in the junkyard. They're terrible, they were terrible cars, like between 2000 and like 05, skinny, gutless pieces of crap and V6, power steering would go out, the power steering could catch the car on fire. It would mess up so bad. I had one almost do that. One officer did have his catch on fire. Not good, hated those cars. Then we got the 06 to uh, eh, 2011 Chevy Caprices. Those were more rounded, a little more roomy. Only thing about those is when they got too hot, what, in Arizona, it, the AC would completely turn off. You could hit that button all day long and it ain't turning off. Once it reached a certain point, the only thing that would ever make that AC come back on was park the car, let it sit, and then try it again later. That was it. In fact, actually, I drove the last actual car. In 2019, the final actual police car, uh, four-door sedan, was taken off a lot. That was driven by me, and so I felt pretty good about that. I, I liked the cars, I really did. I ended up uh, driving the Ford Explorer, and honestly, that wasn't too bad. Now, they, they were they were roomy, a uh, lot, lot of stuff to put your things. Uh, the only thing is they got terrible gas mileage. I mean, you'd maybe drive 20 miles in a shift, 25, 30 at the most, and sometimes you have to fill up. Now granted, you're idling, but gas hogs. Uh, one quick funny story we'll end this with, and it is when I was uh, working an off-duty job driving one of the old uh, Chevy Caprices, um, no, sorry, yeah, yeah, the old uh, 06 and plus Chevy Caprices, going through a construction zone, and I had all these weird signs, and as I did, I accidentally clipped the side of a little sign and put a little thing on the front fender. And then, of course, you gotta, if you do that, you gotta call the boss up and tell him what you did, because if you bring in the car with a dent, the next guy is gonna do it, it's gonna go, hey. 
So they'll, they'll know, believe me. So anyways, he came out and uh, he looked at it and I thought for sure I was getting rolled up. I really did because I thought, man, this is... But he looks at it and he goes, you know what, if you can buff that out, I won't write you up. And I said, you sir, have you a deal? So I drove to the nearest O'Reilly's, got me some polishing compound and some rags, went, drove behind the store, took off my vest, and just buffed, elbow greased the living hell out of that thing. And it was, it was funny. The rest of the car was old and faded. The front fender, spotless. And I avoided a write-up. So hey, not bad. Hope you guys like that one. Hope you always like that, to talk about the police cars. Let's keep on moving. Well, I don't know what that is, but we're going to check this out here. Wow. On a Sunday even, and still no cord clippers. Uh, so far, this is my second Sunday, and not bad. I must say, not bad. What is this? That's just a little, little Star Wars thing, yeah, like that. Oh, okay. What's that there? Onward we go. It looks like we got a little something up at the front of the engine there, folks. Let's wait for them to pass. Okay. That's all that. Okay. All right, yo. That jumped up at me. It's trying to get me. Smackaroo baby gates. All right. Still got one of these up. My little man now is uh, 18 months. 18 months. And the old toddler ta tantrums they talk about. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's getting them. Those fun little tantrums that they throw. Yay. Well, I don't know what kind of scrap I'm going to get out of here, but this looks interesting. Cast Away. One of, my, one of my favorite movies, by the way. Love that movie. Absolutely amazing. Yikes. That's a little pile there. That's a little one. I already see a Smackdown chair. Do you see one of those? Little metal framey things here. Add up. Oh, wait. Come here, you. Cord hiding out amongst here. Wow. Oh, didn't even have cord clippers come through this week. That's crazy. That is really weird. Normally we'll get somebody. I used to clip the cords. And. Take the aluminum too. Why not? Sure, we'll grab the doggy bed. Why not? Wait a minute. Is it all plastic? Let's see. No? Okay. That looked plastic. I'll fix that later. All right. Stack them up, fold up chairs there. Or stack them up chairs. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. So. Oh, yeah. Get a little weight to it. Stale. Like that for now and pack around it. And then, just use what we got here. Tie it up. There we go. There's a few things there. Looks like a little house clean out of some sort. I think I see even a satellite dish. Well, we got us Razor scooters in the back. Free all that up. Okay. Yeah, this bike has definitely seen its day. Let's get this. Wow. Well, if I ever need plastic wrap, I guess I'll have that for life. Lord. Wow. So. And yeah, 
I'll grab this, sure. I mean, you know. I could find things to wrap up and now I could sell it to resale it. I'm sure somebody industrial uses for that. Wrapping up pallets and whatnot. I'll just go there. Oh, a laptop sitting on the top of this pile here. That I did. Oh, one of these. Okay. Grab that. Definitely movie day today. Stargate, Tombstone, Independence Day. All right. Okay, got some light fixture there. Well, if I ever needed a traffic barrier for anything, <laughs> can't say I ever got one of those. Now, me and Grills don't get along. So, I will do, these things hurt me a lot. So, I'll rob a grill, I'll take the heaviest parts of the grill, the whole grill, I'm all leaving. You might see me take one from time to time, but most of these things really jack up my shoulder and my back and all that, and frankly, that ain't worth it. So, that's a good 20 pounds right there. And, let me go to what else. Oh, and... A thin little TV today. Whew! Uh, kind of heavy though. Kind of heavy. Wow. Okay. Oh, again, it's like weird. It's like real heavy on the bottom. <laughs> Perfect. See some good stuff sticking out of there. Oh, and a few more. Those things there. Ah, okay. Well, they tried to tape them up. Didn't quite do so well, but hey. Some car parts. Oh, yeah. Oh, no exhausts. Twisty turny ones. Yeah. I'm actually just probably, I, I don't think I'm, I, I, I won't have room for this. I'm just gonna grab the chairs. I, I grab mainly metal, but uh. A little messed up. Yeah, that's, I, they, it all goes. Yeah, it just goes to the scrap yard. Yeah, but thank you guys. I appreciate it, I really do. Ain't a problem. Toaster oven and laundry basket. That's what it looks like. There's that. All right. Okay. This is not something you see. This has got a regular plate on it here. And back draught. Thirsty since 1978. Is this like a like a bar thing or like a like an advertisement for a like something they park out in front of a bar. That's pretty cool. Back draught, thirsty since 1978. I've looked that one up, interesting. Is that right, Fike? Thank you. Need some wire sticking out there. Let's see what that is. Whole bag of wire, all right. All right, folks, with the scrap looming on the horizon, here we are for another wrap-up of today. Definitely a lot of steel today, a lot of heat. <laughs> Probably gonna throw in a few more things, going a few more places, but I'm telling you folks, I'm cutting it a tad bit short today because it is just crazy hot. I mean, after every stop, I'm having to wipe down and drink water, everything, so. But hey, we still got a good, lot, good amount of stuff, really good amount of stuff. I wanna thank you guys for coming along. Like I said, we're near 1,300 subscribers, folks. I really thank you for every watch. Thank you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.